We've lived out of these two little personal items for two weeks in South America, and we're really excited to walk you through exactly what we packed and how we did it. And we had to pack for pretty much every occasion. Yeah, we had to plan for the hot sand beaches in Aruba, the jungles of Peru, the autumn mountains of Chile, any weather condition you can imagine we've experienced on this trip. Yeah, and the reason that we packed personal item was because we were flying a couple of different South American airlines where it was pretty pricey to actually add on a bag. And so we just wanted to set this challenge for ourselves two weeks in a personal item if we could accomplish it and i'd say we did a pretty good job yeah we had nine different flight legs on these trips and not a single time did we get nickel or dime always passes personal items yeah and i don't think we ever truly felt like we were missing anything no i could have used a couple more socks but <laughs> for the most part we were pretty good and on top of that we also had to plan for a wedding michael had to fit his entire suit within his backpack and shoes suit and shoes, and shoes. yeah so to be able to fit all of that in these bags in addition to everything we need for all those other climates. That was a challenge of this trip. So let's actually jump into it. The bags that we bought for this trip are the Peak Design travel backpacks. And we bought the 30 liter instead of the 40 liter. And the reason behind going with the smaller size was we needed to make sure that these fit under the seat in front of us and would be counted as a personal item by some of the smaller airlines that typically nickel and dime you when it comes to getting overhead bin space. And out of the nine flights we took, we were able to pass these off every single time. The actual capacity of the bags is 33 liters whenever it's fully expanded and 27 liters whenever it's compressed. Yeah, and we really thought we'd be really stretched to the limits, bursting the 33 liter mark. And just about every single flight we went on, we were actually able to compress it down to that 27 liter size. Yeah, another reason that we love these bags was the option to include a hip strap. We've been backpacking in Europe before and we knew a hip strap wasn't essential because it's really Really hard to have a backpack on your back for hours at a time without taking off some of that weight on your hips. So with the Peak Design bags, they actually have the option for you to buy a hip strap separately and you can just thread it through the back panel of the bag. And so this is what the hip strap looks like. It's not crazy padded, which means it isn't going to be the comfiest hip strap on the market, but it's really incognito. And it was actually perfect for whenever we were trying to pass these off as personal items because we could just tuck these away and it just looks like a normal backpack. The superpower of these bags is it's really just one giant volume. You don't lose all the space with the little pockets. Yeah, that was the main thing that we were looking for in a backpack was that clamshell opening and just having a large capacity that you could organize yourself. And these were absolutely perfect for that. I don't think they could have worked out better. And on top of that, these bags are just really high quality. You can tell the material is going to withstand pretty much anything. And we were really pushing these zippers to their limit sometimes whenever we were trying to get that compression right. But these bags withheld pretty much any torture that we could give to them, which is a great sign. And we just really like the brand Peak Design in general. I think they come out with really great products. We have a couple different products from them and they're always top notch. All right, so maybe now we should open up these bags and tell you what's inside of them. Yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna start with jumping into my bag. So these, as I said, open as a clamshell and you'll see the back just pops up and you have the full capacity of the backpack, which has been amazing for this trip. The first item I have here is a rain jacket. It's kind of funny because we actually didn't end up using this for rain at all, but it was definitely nice to have just on the off chance that there would be rain. It was supposed to thunderstorm in Machu Picchu, and so I did bring this to Machu Picchu, but thankfully we had a blue skies day, which was A-OK -okay with me. I'm very happy that I didn't need to use this. The other thing we used this for in Aruba was for sun protection. So Michael was actually wearing this with the hood up while we were walking on the beaches of Aruba because we didn't want to get any more sunburn than we already had. And this rain jacket is from Colombia. I I think I got it from a family member. And it's nice because it's just really lightweight and packs fairly small. It still took up a significant amount of suitcase space, but I think it was worth it to have it as backup. Let me just say that family member was her grandma. Yeah. <laughs> She's rocking her grandma's raincoat. Yeah, I actually get a lot of clothing from my grandma. Whenever she doesn't like something, she gives it to me and I gladly take it. <laughs> and you'll be able to see that 99% of the stuff that we packed was in packing cubes. I don't want to be the dead horse with packing cubes because I know everybody on the internet talks about them, but they really are extremely useful, not just for organization, but for really compressing your clothes down and getting as much as possible out of the suitcases. And speaking of packing cubes, we actually filmed this packing video a couple of months ago when we got back from South 
America. And in that time, we started our own packing cube company. We absolutely love packing cubes and we've tried just about every set on the market, but we realized no one was designing packing cubes specifically for the days of the week. So that's exactly what we did. We designed these cubes so you can fit a full outfit into each cube. And you'll notice the size of these packing cubes are smaller compared to other sets you might see. And that's because we made these packing cubes specifically for kids. Nobody is making packing cubes for kids. Which is crazy because the last thing you want to worry about when you're on vacation is if you packed all your children's outfits correctly. Plan your outfits ahead of time and enjoy your vacation. And while we designed these packing cubes for kids, we had no problem fitting our own outfits into them for a full week of travel. And Courtney was a rock star. She actually designed all these prints in Canva from scratch. Yeah, and we went back and forth with the factory a million times. They probably hate us at this point, but we wanted to make the best premium product for you guys, and we really think we did that. And like I said, we fried just about every packing cube on the market, and some of them are just flimsy and not made of very high quality materials. Yeah, just opening these up, you can really feel that it's a premium product. We have dual zippers on each of them, and the fabric is strong, but still lightweight. It took several iterations to get here, but we finally got our vision right, and these are top-notch packing cubes. They're going to fit perfectly into any standard carry-on. And you can even fit all seven of them fully packed into the personal item that we took on our South America trip. <laughs> Plus, we think they look really cute. We're really proud of these, and we hope you guys enjoy them as much as we do. We're selling these on Amazon, and we'll have the link in the description below. Thank you so much if you decide to purchase and support our channel. It really means the world to us. But if you're not interested, that's totally fine too. We're jumping back to the video. The next packing cube I have here just has socks and underwear in there, and I'm not gonna show that to you, but I will say, obviously, it would have been nice to bring much more socks and underwear than I could, but it was a small backpack, and that wasn't exactly possible. So we did end up washing our clothes halfway through the trip, which we can talk about later. We actually hand washed them within our tiny little hostel room. So that was an experience, but it ended up working well. And the next little bag I have here just contains some more socks and intimates, which I'm not going to show you. In this bag, I have most of my makeup as well as a tiny little hairbrush. I actually didn't love having this hairbrush just because it was kind of hard to uh, smush it into my bag like everything else was. And I didn't want to damage the bristles. So in hindsight, I think I might have gotten something that actually folds up, but it did the job. Also in my makeup bag, I just have two earrings in this tiny little jewelry case. I'm not a huge jewelry person, so it ended up working fine. But I did want a nice pair of hoops for the wedding that we went to, and then just some smaller hoops for going out. Within my makeup bag, I just have some brow powder, some SPF powder, I have this little palette that has uh, both bronzer and blush in it and a highlighter that has broken and shattered. I also have this little eyeshadow palette from e.l.f., which I highly recommend. It's only a couple bucks and it's really, really good quality and perfect for travel. I have concealer. I didn't bring any sort of foundation. Brow gel. My all-time favorite mascara, L'Oreal Telescopic. I have a beauty blender, which is filthy right now because I'm pretty sure something shattered within my makeup bag. An eyelash curler, liquid liner, a more full coverage concealer, a whole bunch of makeup brushes, a brown eyeliner, a lip pencil, and something that I actually purchased for the trip. This is just a mirror, which I found really convenient for the trip. And it also has the ability to light up, which I found very useful because in a lot of the places that we stayed at, there wasn't a mirror or it was really dark. So this was pretty useful. So moving on to the next packing cube, this is where I believe I contain all of my shirts for the trip. So the one sweatshirt that I brought was just this simple black crew neck. This was actually from the men's section at Target, but I wanted something that I could still somewhat dress up if I wore it with jeans walking around the city, as well as something that would keep me comfy at night. And so this was perfect for that. And I was actually usually wearing it whenever we were traveling. I brought about eight different shirts. I think they're all from Target. That's pretty much the only place I shop for clothes. So moving on to the next packing cube. This one was more miscellaneous items. So this was my wedding outfit. I actually borrowed this jumpsuit from my mom. The wedding we went to was in Chile and we were told that women there usually wear full length gowns. I don't have a full length gown in my closet nor did I really wanna go out and purchase one just to stuff it in a backpack for two weeks. And so this actually worked perfectly. I wasn't as dressed up as I would have 
like to be, but I don't think I stuck out too much. And it was also nice because this didn't wrinkle in the slightest, which was something that I was worried about. Moving on, I have one pair of shorts. And the only reason I brought these was because we were going to Aruba. I also have a pair of leggings, which I wore on every single flight we went on, a one-piece bathing suit, and one pair of PJ bottoms. And I usually just stole one of Michael's shirts for my PJ top at night. And that's it with that packing cube. And moving on, my number one most worn item on this trip were my jeans. <laughs> jeans aren't exactly travel friendly because they're so bulky, they take forever to dry, but I just couldn't leave home without these jeans because I love them so much. And the good thing about jeans while traveling, this might be a controversial opinion, but I have heard that you're not supposed to wash jeans. I think the creator of Levi's has said a statement like that before, and so it may gross some of you out, but I actually didn't end up washing these jeans for the entirety of the trip. Moving on to the next Next item, I just have these simple sandals from Target, which I actually wore to the wedding. I would have loved to have nicer shoes for the wedding, but I actually think these ended up looking just fine. And they were also useful in Aruba. So I have a couple more miscellaneous items in my backpack, but before I jump into those, I wanna give Michael a chance to go through his bag so he can tell you what he brought. So Courtney did a great job walking you through what was in her bag. I'm excited to walk you through what was in mine. So opening this up here, you'll see the common theme of packing cubes. So like Courtney, I love packing cubes. I just like the organizational element equally as much as I love the compression element. I have a couple different cubes of different sizes. We'll start here. This is my socks and my underwear. One of the things when traveling, I really like to have good synthetic materials. I feel like it dries better. It doesn't absorb any of that smell. And what I found is the brand 32 Cool makes wonderful socks, underwear, actually even t-shirts. So you'll see that theme running through here too. I'm practically a 32 Cool model dressed from head to toe. Probably about seven pairs of boxers. I have about seven pairs of ankle socks. And I actually brought two pairs of tube socks for the wedding. So that's what's in this little packing cube. Cast that off to the side. We do have a little snack bag, which actually grew pretty happy during the course of this trip. We have some leftover strange chocolates and granola bars and tutti frutti cookies from all over South America. So they're kind of fun. Um, moving into my main packing cube. So this is where I had the bulk of my stuff. Definitely a slightly bigger than my other packing cube. When it's open here, you can really see how much stuff you can fit in here. So inside of this, I have my dress shirt, which I wore for the wedding. Like I said, I really like that synthetic material. And one of the main problems with backpacks typically is the ability to keep things fresh and crisp. And I actually have this shirt. It's made by Mizzen and Maine. It is made of the stretchiest material you've ever seen. I swear you can make a slingshot out of this shirt. And what's nice about it is it never wrinkles. So even though it was, you know, crammed in this little bag, you hang it up and boom, it's perfect, no wrinkles. And that was really useful for the wedding. From an outerwear perspective, like we said, we were in the mountains in Chile. Peru can get kind of cold that time of year. So we wanted to make sure I was covered with good layers. So I did bring one quarter zip. I liked this because it could be dressed up fairly well. It's an REI quarter zip, but really liked that you could have either a t-shirt under this, or if you wanted to have a collar and look a little sharper, it definitely was a very versatile piece of clothing. Keeping with that theme, I actually have another 32 Cool. I actually think this might be 32 Heat, which means it's the same company, but instead of it being that cool material, it's designed to keep you a little warmer. But this is just a long sleeve t-shirt, so this is a great base layer. I actually wore this several times in the cooler climates, and I think Courtney and I actually wore this in Aruba as well, just to have a little bit of extra sun protection. I burn like a baby. Always good to have something that helps prevent the sun from kissing my skin. My final piece of outerwear I had was just another thin crew neck. So this is just a little waffle knit sweater. I like it because it's pretty versatile. And then from a pant perspective, I have some of these Old Navy active pants. They have really nice synthetic material to them. They don't break the bank. And I had two pairs of pants. So I had one pair in olive drab green and I had another identical pair in gray. And my final packing cube that I brought was due to the wedding. And this packing cube is a beast. I actually have a whole suit jacket, whole suit pants, and actually seven of the Cool 32 t-shirts in here. I'll show you how they all sit. Oh, and I'm actually laughing to myself here. In addition to my suit, I also have my swimsuit in here. And this swimsuit is great because it also doubles as shorts for me. I was able to have seven of these Cool 32 t-shirts in this packing cube. And these, like I said, they breathe so well. They have amazing stretch to them and just feel like they're giving you a hug when you're wearing them. Very, very affordable and just man, great material to have on the road. And then inside this cube, last but not least, we have my suit jacket. I had my suit pants in there and these also folded up pretty darn nicely. This actually worked out pretty well. I don't think I looked like a wrinkly guy. I actually felt like I looked kind of dapper. 
Michael and I each brought a coat for our trip and we were pretty much wearing these all the time, especially whenever we were traveling, even whenever it wasn't that cold out, just because we wanted to reduce the amount that was actually in our bags. The jacket that I brought is the Patagonia down sweater. This was essentially the smallest puffer jacket I could find that was really good quality and kept you extremely warm. And this worked out really well for me. It was actually really nice to have the option to be able to compress it. And the other superpower of this coat is if you bottle it up, it makes the coziest little pillow on airplane. My coat is definitely a little less puffy, a little less cozy, but it killed two birds with one stone. So this was my raincoat and also my warmth coat. Who makes this? This is a- uh, uh, Dekine, This is Dekine. a Dekine, Dekine. I think the superpower of this coat is the number of pockets it has. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many pockets it has. It's basically Hermione's bag. I could fit anything in here, which when you're trying to look small on some of these flights, the things that we didn't feel comfortable stuffing in our bag, we're actually able to hide in some of these pockets. And this thing is heavy. <laughs> it is so heavy. To be able to walk miles with that on is pretty impressive. This trip was more than just a quick fling to South America. I had another motive when I was planning this trip and that was to get engaged to the love of my life. And to do that, I had to keep the ring very safe and very well hidden. And this coat was instrumental in that. And actually in this coat, I carried for, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of miles. I had designed and 3D printed on my printer, this structure, which I had designed to perfectly house the ring. Proposed to her at Machu Picchu. I don't know what she was thinking, but she said yes. And I'm just so happy. But yeah, so I had to keep this incredibly well hidden using the pockets in here, bouncing into the main volume in there when she wasn't looking, if she had to ruffle through my pockets. It's also just impressive that Michael was able to get this all the way to South America without it breaking in half and without <laughs> me seeing it. So I was really impressed whenever I saw that. And I was not only nervous of her finding it, with how many times we were going through a TSA, I was just praying, please don't have them pull me aside, search it and blow the surprise and I'd have to get down on one knee in the TSA line if uh, the cover was blown prematurely. Luckily it wasn't, we were able to make it to Machu Picchu and it was a amazing backdrop for starting this next chapter of life. Each of us had one pair of shoes that we wore pretty much every day except for the wedding. For me, I have these ultra range bands. I love these things so much, even to the point where if I'm working from home, I will throw these on just because they're so comfortable. I did get these from my grandma, constant theme, but I love those. And these were the only shoes that I came back from the trip with. I believe they're Nike Quest 2s. I'm not a huge shoe guy, so to me, they're just black gym shoes, but they are the comfiest gym shoes I've ever worn. Yeah, you tried them on in Kohl's, and I don't think you've been more related with a shoe before. <laughs> it's just like hugging your feet. And so while I said these are the only shoes shoes that I came back from the trip with, and I did spend about 99% of my time in these shoes. I actually did go down on the trip with another pair of shoes, and I actually had packed my dress shoes in this bag. So this was all part of our plan. We knew that we were gonna be pretty tight on space. So before we even went on the trip, I brought my rattiest old dress shoes down, and I actually did leave them in Chile when I left. So went down with the two pairs, came back with one. Yeah, and it was a pair of shoes that we were planning on decluttering anyway, so it worked out pretty well. He was able to wear them to the wedding, and then we said sayonara, and we didn't have that extra weight for the rest of the trip. And just in general, we really try to stick to a cap capsule wardrobe whenever we're traveling. And essentially what that means is packing items that are either similar colors or neutral colors so that you can kind of mix and match things and essentially just wear the same uniform every day with a little bit of variety. So it just makes it so much easier on yourself because neither of us are fashionistas and that's one more decision we don't have to make for the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. No funny bone. <laughs> So with that capsule wardrobe point, one thing I also did on the trip was I only brought one belt. So I actually wore my wedding belt the entire time I was down there. Which you had hot glue gun the night before. Yeah. That's because it's another thing that's kind of falling apart on us. I, I don't think I bought a belt in the last four years. And this thing was splaying open from here, probably about down to here. So I was hot gluing it, taking old textbooks, pressing it down. And on this belt, the whole trip was probably my favorite thing I brought with me. 
And that is my passport and document holder. So every time I've traveled to other countries, there's just always that constant fear of having your passport missing and being stuck. I've worn just about every kind of passport travel wallet that you can imagine. I've had the ones that you wear over your neck or wear on your waist. No matter how you wear them, they just, they're sweaty, they're gross. You think about them, you don't ever feel comfortable. And they're kind of awkward to actually take out. Oh yeah. And like be useful. Oh, you want my money? Let me get my sweaty wallet out. I got this one for the trip and it has been an absolute lifesaver. You wear it inside your pants on your belt. It has these two loops and there is no way anyone can get to that. Yeah, so this was very useful. Um, I basically passport, vaccination card, some money. I actually have an Apple AirTag in here. Not saying that it would help me track it down if some criminal had it, if I'd be bold enough to chase him down. And I actually also kept in here a little extra top piece to that structure in case it broke off. So I had a backup in case I needed to do some emergency surgery on that building on the road. So for my everyday carry, I was pretty much always, always, always wearing this fanny pack from Lululemon. You can fit so much in here. And it also has a perfect little spot for your passport and vaccination card, which were extremely useful on the road. It's always nice to have it very, very close so you can just keep checking to make sure it's there. So I was wearing this all of the time. And in this bag, I was always carrying this little wallet that I just got on Amazon. I also have an Apple AirTag in there, just in case. On top of that, I was always carrying hand sanitizer with me. And also within this bag, I had a backup battery pack, which was always on me because we didn't want to be stuck in a foreign country with no battery on our cell phones and no way of figuring out where we were or how to get out of there. So this was pretty much essential and always with me. And I didn't carry this all the time, but usually on flights, I would have my earbuds. These aren't anything special. I think they were $30 on Amazon or so, and they really do the job well. I have chapstick as well as some gingins. These are our ultimate favorite travel candy. <laughs> She's underselling them. They are so good. Yeah, they're amazing. We probably brought what, like 200 gingins or least. something like that. <laughs> they're not only delicious, but they're also supposed to help you if you get nauseous at all from traveling. So we just use that as an excuse to eat a bunch of gingins whenever we're traveling. Doctor's orders. Yeah. I also have a pen, which we ended up not really using that much for any potential custom forms. And then I have these little individual eye drops for flights because Michael gets crazy red eyes whenever he flies. I look like I'm out of a monster movie. And also within here, I can't find it right now. We also have essentially what is like an eye drop gel and it kind of just really soothes your eyes after a long plane ride or if you just get dry eyes in general. It's kind of like Vaseline for your eyeballs. It's it's really weird put on and it, you actually have like a film over your eyes. Yeah, your blurry bit, vision, yeah. But it definitely works. Another great thing about this bag was I could wear it with my backpack and I kind of just hid it and it worked as another personal item. So what I would do is just clip it around my waist and then whenever I was about to board a plane, I would just swing it around and nobody could tell I had an extra little bag there. And this actually works perfect on the plane because you pretty much have all of your items here that you might need during the flight and you don't have to access your main bag. A little kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> Toiletries? Let's jump into it. So this was our toiletry bag and I think it worked out pretty well. What do you think? We bought it specifically for the trip. And I think one of the number one things we were looking for was a toiletry bag with a hook on it. It has two main pockets. I believe this one is TSA compliant one at the bottom. So that's the size you're supposed to use. Yeah, I don't think we had anybody check our liquids at all going through security, but we kept most of the liquids down here and then some miscellaneous items in here. Um, so diving into it, we have, I think this was a cleanser and lotion, uh, shampoo and conditioner. These are almost like a silicon rubber squeeze bottle. And why they're so nice is you can actually really easily fill it up with your product, but then when it comes to getting it out, you, every last drop because of how flexible they are. And they fit perfectly in the very bottom of that toiletry bag, which really wouldn't make a huge difference if you're not packing as tightly as we were, but we needed all the space possible. Another thing that we probably should have brought more of was sunscreen. I think we would have been fine if if we didn't go to Aruba, but Aruba really cut our sunscreen supply in half at the very, very start of the trip. And we, we got pretty burnt. Another thing that I probably should have used more of was this bug spray. I brought my own bug spray from home and just filled it in 
one of the bottles that came with the toiletry bag. I got some pretty nasty bites at Machu Picchu, particularly around the ankles and on my arms, pretty much anywhere that wasn't covered by clothing. But this bug spray is pretty cool. It's non-DEET, so it smells like, I think, eucalyptus, I want to say. Mm -hmm. It smells amazing, and I think it worked better than most of the DEET stuff we've seen. There's actually a funny story with this bug spray. My sister was wearing it, and she was at a restaurant, and some lady came up to her and asked her what perfume she was wearing. So it smells pretty good for a bug spray, but I definitely didn't apply it early enough at Machu Picchu and that was my own fault. And speaking of bug bites, I did get the bug bite thing for this trip. What this is supposed to do is whenever you get bit, you essentially just put it on the bite and pull it up and it sucks the, I don't know, poison, venom, what, yeah. venom, whatever they inject into you out of your skin so that your body doesn't have a reaction in the first place, which I mean, to me, that concept makes sense. You're sucking out the venom before you can have a reaction to it rather than treating your reaction. So I think this worked pretty well. For some of them, I don't think I used it soon enough to really be able to suck that venom out. But overall, I really like this thing and I really like the concept of it. I have this razor and this is a nice little traveling case for it too because it doesn't rust because it sits in there and it can dry itself. So that was really convenient. I also have a little vial of makeup remover. We have one deodorant, some Aquaphor, some more eye drops, <laughs> uh, toothpaste. We had another one of these as well. And then we had some miscellaneous things like uh, Pepto-Bismol and some medicine. And we didn't bring toothbrushes. We brought our toothbrush. But before you're too grossed out by that phrase, uh, when I say our toothbrush, it's because it's our toothbrush body. We actually shared the same electric toothbrush base and we each just brought our own heads on the rope. So this saved a bit of space so we weren't carrying around two of these clunkers. And then the last toiletry we have, I actually kept in the top of my bag just because it didn't fit that well. And that was my electric razor. This thing just holds a charge like crazy. It's so much easier than having to deal with just regular razors on the road. Love this thing. And then we also brought with us, which I kept in the top, toothbrush charger. Um, and I have my electric razor charger in there as well. And we both have our dentures, as we like to call them. We both wear our retainers at night. We don't want our teeth moving. We both went through the horrors of braces. So we're, we're keeping those bad boys safe. Let's see what else do we have. We did bring these um, baby wipes with us. I figured these might be nice if we want to clean our hands. It's kind of just a waste of space, which um, I didn't expect. So let's get our toiletries out of the way. It'd be so fun to clean up later. Another very important item for us was our laundry situation. So we actually didn't stay at many places that had a washer or a dryer. So what we ended up doing was carrying around these laundry pads from Sea to Summit. So they're essentially just little pads where you can throw a couple of them in for a laundry load. And what we were putting these detergent sheets in was actually just a standard dry bag. I think this is 12 liter. And we would just fill this up with water from the sink about here, throw in our dirty clothes, drop a couple of those detergent sheets in, shake it around real nice, and then give it a rinse. Yeah, I was actually very surprised by how well it cleaned our clothes. They smelled totally fine. We have this little guy, which is a little clothesline, and what's so cool about this is you can have a whole clothesline in here. It's got clips that make it really easy to latch on to wherever it is in your hostel. And it's got little beads that function as clothespins. So it made it really easy to hang our clothes up to dry. So mm -hmm. all in all, we had a washing machine that folded up to about uh, this big. And sort of going along with that, we have this microfiber towel, which was really useful in Aruba. This was our only towel we had on the beach. And this one in particular is just really lightweight. It's a microfiber, it's pretty small, and it definitely could function as a bath towel if you didn't have one. Another sort of luxury item were these Sea to Summit pillows. These are pretty tiny, but they're your standard airplane pillow whenever you take them out and blow them up. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, they actually work pretty well on a flight. What I kind of like about them is you can release some of the air if you want to be a little mushier. And when we were leaning on each other, if you let some of the air out, it actually was surprisingly comfy on the plane. So now moving on to electronics. 
we have a couple different things here to show you. Yeah, I think we had a really good setup on the road when it came to charging. I think we were able to charge seven or eight different items with a single power adapter. So for those that don't know, different countries have different shaped plugs, different voltages, and we were able to use a single one of these adapters, which has the different outlet shapes on there. So you can just transform it with whatever one you need. And while you can plug in regular prongs into this, the superpower of this is it also has four USBs out the top. So that enabled us to charge a whole lot of devices with this. And the way we even maximized that a step further was with this really snazzy charging pad. So I was really looking for a wireless charging pad because I love my wireless charger at home. It seems silly, but whenever you're on the road, it's so much nicer to just be able to throw your phone and whatever you need to charge on the pad before you go to bed, rather than worrying about a whole lot of cables, which we were doing with some of the other items anyway. So this was really nice in particular for my Apple Watch because it sits really nicely on the middle section of the charging pad. And it charged up my Apple Watch perfectly every night. In addition to this, we were also able to charge our two phones here. That ended up working really well for us. And it only took a single plug into the outlet converter, which was really nice. We have our dual camera battery charger. We just have a couple miscellaneous cables in here to charge the various devices. Also in here, we have our SD card case. It's so funny the little things you get excited about as you kind of get deeper and deeper into kind of making videos. And this is one of them. It's basically a perfectly cut out case for micro SD cards and SD card. And it really allowed us to make sure that we were not losing anything on the road. Yeah, we were the kind of people where before we would carry our SD cards, what, in a plastic bag? Like yeah, little zip super line. dangerous. <laughs> and we weren't worried about our SD cards at all which is huge whenever you're running around the world getting a bunch of footage you really don't want to lose that so we felt pretty good with the durability of this and then the only other piece of electronics we have were i have a set of real airpods those kept their charge very very nicely on the road really nice for the airplane too to block out the noise so that's pretty much all our electronics ah but you forget we picked up these lovely headphones while we were on our <laughs> Avianca flight. You couldn't pay me enough right now to try to detangle these. <laughs> but these were incredibly useful because even though wireless headphones have come so far, if you wanna watch movies on the planes, you still 99% yeah. of the time need to have that headphone jack. Yeah, that was one of the things we walked on to one of our long haul flights with the TVs and we just smacked ourselves in the head. We were like, oh, we didn't bring our uh, earbuds to plug in, but they ended up handing those out, so it worked perfectly. This is our switch pod. It's basically how we're able to set the camera up on the road. So if we want to get a higher shot while we're filming, we can actually hold it and the camera will mount right to this faceplate. Or if we want to get like a time lapse or set it on a more of a table, it actually swings open and becomes a small little tripod. And this little thing is incredibly handy. I actually- Yeah, we're kind of obsessed with this thing. It's so useful. I am just amazed at how often it comes in handy. It feels so good in your hand. It just works. It's one of those few products that you buy that just consistently works. Yeah, and we also have a, what's it called? Arc Swiss, Arc Swiss. mount for the switch pod. And this is essentially because we have a peak design capture clip. So we have a base plate on our camera. And with this mount, we're just able to slide that base plate on, twist it, and the camera is secure and we're ready to go. Another thing that's really nice about the switch pod is we can just hold up the camera whenever we're walking around the city and it's the perfect little selfie stick. Okay, a couple more things. This video is turning out to be a little bit longer than expected. Yeah, so this is a off-brand life straw. It basically enables you to drink any water from any source, but we never were unable to find bottled water that was safe drink and a couple other random things we have here we both had one pair of sunglasses with a hard case which i think is important whenever you're traveling because you don't want your sunglasses to be smushed another pretty convenient thing i have here is this little pill organizer we have things like ibuprofen some of my prescription medication and melatonin here another random item were our sleeping masks for the plane and another thing that was uh, pretty important that we were taking with us we needed travel insurance to enter Chile. So I have copies of that insurance here. I have some copies of our train tickets, bus tickets, Machu Picchu tickets. We definitely wanted backup copies of everything. Another thing we brought with us on this trip was our camera gear. So in addition to everything we've already shown you, we've also been lugging around the camera that's filming this video. And with it comes some kind of cool accessories. So I have a Peak Design capture clip on the strap of my backpack. And that's almost like a James Bond feeling gadget where I can just take the camera and shunk 
lock it onto my shoulder and I know it's not going anywhere. We also have a neck strap for it. So this just attaches right to the camera. We also invested in one of these lens caps. And this thing was so useful on the road because it's got this rubbery silicon rim and a really hard plastic on the base. And when you're bouncing around trains, planes, automobiles, having that peace of mind that this is working for you, really useful. Another thing that we brought on the trip was just a Nalgene water bottle. And as you can see, we have some stickers on this one from our favorite travels. We got this sticker in Aruba, which we designated as the theme of the trip, que random. But this was really nice because it was lightweight and I could just clip it onto my backpack whenever we weren't using it, especially because we were drinking bottled water that we bought for the most part in these countries. This was nice just on those rare occasions where it was safe to actually fill up our water bottles and drink it from there. Another thing that we brought on the trip but didn't bring back with us was a wedding gift for the bride and groom down in Chile. And one thing that came back with us from the trip, our lovely Airbnb host, Elvira, was kind enough to give us this I love Aruba tote bag. Yeah, and we actually brought an extra tote bag on this trip. So if you go to the grocery store, you can just easily have an extra bag and so this one didn't see as much light because this Aruba one worked pretty well yeah this actually got a good amount of use on the trip so mm -hmm. Ovira if you're watching this thank you very much we'd love it and another sort of obvious thing that we brought with us was our phones in particular we did a lot of research as to the best way to actually get service in these countries because we both have phone plans that don't include some sort of international service so the way that we actually were able to activate our phones for international use was by using Google Fi. With Google Fi, they basically sent us a SIM card in the mail for free. We just popped it into Courtney's iPhone, which worked surprisingly well. It gave her a brand new cell number, which we just distributed to our friends and family so they could reach us. And we were able to have cell and data abroad. And it was incredibly affordable compared to other international cell phone plans we saw. You pay as you go, I think it's $10 a gigabyte. We used, I think, maybe three gigabytes the whole trip. And it was just really reassuring, especially because both Chile and Peru use Uber down there and so from anywhere we could call an uber and get back to where we needed to be especially if we felt like we were in a place that was feeling a little bit unsafe and surprisingly the ubers were extremely cheap down there it was so nice we had some rides that were 45 minutes that came out to under five dollars us and i think that's it we've been filming for quite a long period of time now so hopefully we aren't forgetting anything but our stuff is everywhere and it looks like we've covered all of it i just can't believe how much stuff we fit into those little bags. If you have questions on any of these items, let us know in the comments below. We're happy to answer anything. They'll all be linked in the description of this video down below as well. Yeah, thank you all so much for watching if you are still watching at this point in the video. We are a travel channel. If you haven't seen any of our other videos, we're doing a whole series of South American videos. So you can see these bags in action during the course of our travels there. Thanks everyone. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.